Hello and welcome to another devlog for Peasant Uprise. So my goal with this devlog is to walk through one of the quests in Peasant Uprise to give the viewers a good idea of how Peasant Uprise plays. So we're gonna cover the gameplay and I'm gonna end with a marathon update. So let's jump right into it. Last week I published the Peasant Uprise Steam page and I do hope you check it out and if you fancy this kind of game, please add it to your wishlist. So here we are. This is the third level the player will encounter. Mountain Forest South. We have already completed the first quest of this level and we are ready to embark on the second quest. But before doing so, I need to make some decisions. The first thing is I need to decide who to bring along. Because time is of the essence, I need the peasants to multitask. So I want to be able to go on an adventure, but I also want to leave some peasants behind to keep doing work. As our rebellion grows, our food requirements are going to increase, and we're also going to need more supplies to build other facilities. Milo is a priest and he will not engage in combat, so we're going to have him stay. Now Henry, I've been focusing him on work efficiency because he already came in with one work efficiency skill point. So let's have him stay and do some work. Finally, Gerard is my builder and I just acquired him and he's only level one. So I don't wanna risk losing him either. Everyone else I'm gonna set as P, which stands for priority, which just means that the threshold to eat and rest is increased so they are so they're more ready for battle. Okay? Now Daisy, she's gonna be your leader in this adventure and that's fine. And I just wanna go over the skills and traits just to see if I have any assignments to make. Oh, and that's the end of the day, which is fine. That's day 7th for me. So time is definitely flying by. Um, so let's go back into it. So Astor, yeah, I want him to be a bit of a fighter for me. So I'm going to set some accuracy and stamina. Milo, like we said, he's a worker for us while he's at camp. Daisy, I have focused her on charisma, so I'm going to keep doing that and I'm gonna assign an additional point. She's gonna help me convince soldiers to let me flee from battle and I'm also gonna set her up as a quick learner. Helen I have one trade and she's also a fighter so I'm gonna go with tool master to make sure that we're able to proc those tool abilities more often. I'm kind of building Bertram to be my tank, and again, this is just my approach. And I'm gonna set him as a survival, because he's gonna give me plus 10 max health. So I think everything else is good here. So let's click on the camp and leave camp. And one last thing I need to make sure, the peasants have tools assigned, which they don't. So I'm gonna click take all, that's gonna auto assign the tools and I just want to check on the status of all the tools that is pretty high up there so I don't break any tools in the middle of a battle okay so we're good to go we're heading out and from the previous quest, we already had a clue of where Gilbert is, with, which is holding our next quest. And we know he's behind his cabin and he's being threatened by enemy soldiers. So let's go find him and check out what the problem is. This level is a little bit large and that's by design. I'm gonna rest for a little bit here to recover all the energy. 
Um, the reason why I make this a large level is because I do plan to put more content onto it, some more small side quests or maybe items that the player can grab. So I'm just leaving myself some room for those decisions, but they're definitely not going to be available for the demo at the moment. So there is Gilbert and let's go and talk to him. Shh, don't make so much noise. There you are. What's the situation? They've taken my cabin to serve as their guard and supply station. There is one guard at the front and another one is patrolling back and forth from lake to the main road. And of course this is the lake and we came from the main road which we know is south from here. I think we can take them if we have the numbers. We might, but I had another plan that might yield less bloodshed. There is a log holder behind my cabin with a lever that holds the logs. If we can release the lever at the right time, the log will tremble on one of the soldiers. Then we can take the other soldier with ease. However, there is a small problem. We can reach the lever without being seen from here. Best way is to pass the cabin from the main road and then there is an opening between the trees that leads to the other side of the log holder. I see, and if we go as a group, they will not let us go by. I think it's time to split. I can go ahead and release the lever, then we should join forces to defeat the guards. Sounds like a plan, <laughs> I'll make sure no one else comes this way. So here's a quest log and with a little description of what we have to do, which is to defeat the soldiers that have taken over Gilbert's cabin. Now there is an option in the game to go in what I call a stealth mode or hold ground. And this will make everybody in my rebellion hold ground except the leader. And this is where the game starts to feel more like an art Diablo style RPG when I'm just going solo on the adventure. And as you can see with a bunch of skills and tools. And this is convenient in some occasions, because when you're going solo, you'll have less suspicion. In other words, the detection radius of the soldiers is shorter, and they will not engage in combat. So I can see that there's a soldier there, I can see the cabin and the lock holder behind it, and I can already see the sign for the game action. So I'm just gonna stick here behind the trees, and wait until the soldier is in uh, the right spot, which should be somewhere around there. Let's just head a little bit closer, a little bit closer, make sure we time it right, and there we go. Let's go, let's go, let's do it. Bang. Good. So we have it, and uh, now everybody engages in combat and helps uh, Helen. Oh, Daisy, sorry. And I think we are 5 to 1, so we're in a good situation. I see a couple of misses, but for the most part, we're doing good damage here. I did apply a health buff to Helen, so she'll recover some of the health she's lost. So a small bonus XP gain per person involving battle a small morale boost to all peasants and 4 shillings taken from the bodies. So that's a good thing. Let's go talk to Gilbert to finish the quest. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I can resume my daily life. Choppity chop, let's head to work. Well, you know they'll come back. Actually, there is no such thing as a normal life anymore. But I'm not a soldier, I'm a woodcutter. None of us are what we once were. We do this because we have to, because we all want a normal life, where we don't have to live in fear of losing everything we've worked for. I really wish it wasn't so, but you're absolutely right. I'll help in whatever I can. If I must wield an axe into combat, I will do so for the people of Swain. Choppity chop, let's cut Ashling's heads. <laughs> So there you have it, uh, we finished this quest, 
we got a bunch of stars and each person has earned 30 experience. So that's good. I think, and uh, oh yeah, and we also leveled up a few of our peasants. That's awesome. So as you can see, I love this quest because it does combine game actions, stealth mode and combat all together in order to achieve a goal. We also got to acquire a new peasant and earn a bunch of XP and some coin. So I think this was a very successful run. Regarding the marathon, I did run into a roadblock with a minor injury in my hamstring. This is not good news as I'm in a state where I need this minor injury to heal but I also need to train. So I'm being cautious and allowing this pain to go away but it's definitely a setback that I'll need to make up for when I'm ready to train again. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay video. Please share your thoughts, comments, suggestions in the comments. Thanks. With that said, I'll see you in the next update.